Okay, so here I have uh, some other uh, examples. And again, this is, uh, let's, let's just look at these. These are first draft figures from some of your uh, previous colleagues. Again, people's names have been removed. Not trying to uh, single anybody out here. We're just kind of running through some examples. Again, this, in this case, this was their first attempt at, at generating a, a, a figure for their uh, scholarship. And just like writing, we need to, you know, reiter you know, iteration, 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 edit, edit, edit. So let's take a look at this first one. This is obviously a map. What do you guys think of this? It's missing a lot of stuff. What's it missing? It's missing a legend. Legend? Well, it's got a legend, but but oh, yeah. but what else is it missing? Scale bar. Scale bar. North Arrow. North Arrow. Projection. Projection. Maybe the source of the data or the source of the image data. Right, right. So, yeah, this is, in theory, flooding area. Um, so my suggestion for you guys, I, I talked to a few of you guys about this, is I think you should have nice high resolution. Well, next time we'll talk about uh, a pixel res resolution and how you guys calculate that, like, say, in GIS and stuff. But, but suffice it to say, um, when you make uh, an image of sufficient uh, resolution and quality, my suggestion is you make two versions of this. So you make the version that's complete and good to go within, in this case, ArcGIS. And then you make one without the, the text labels. That will allow you here. So if you look right here, there's, because this graph was generated and it was low resolution, if we look at this, the south, the S, and the J, and the B, a little teeny bit pixelated, a little bit fuzzy. Not, I mean, we can still read it, obviously, but it's not nice and crisp. Now... If we were going to, say, put it in a poster, we could bring in Adobe Illustrator or Acrobat or PowerPoint or whatever and insert that text as a vector object over the, over the, uh, you know, the colors in, in the background part of the map. And then we know that whatever we do, our text is going to be really readable. Right? We can still do everything we want to do, maybe make it have a shadow or whatever. But um, I think having that additional control is nice. Again, you want to have your, your finalized done within the program figure, so you can just hit print because sometimes you'll need that. But it's oftentimes nice to have a little bit of additional control. As you guys know, tweaking, for example, ArcMap can take a while, right? To go back in and, oh my God, I got an attribute table, left click, rub my belly, touch my head, stand upside down, and then change the font, right? And so that's fine when you want to get it to the right place, but but it's maybe much faster to be able to jump right here in a, if I was doing this in PowerPoint, let's say, and just ch making the font two, two stops bigger or, you know, two points bigger or whatever. So, okay. Any other thoughts about this map? No? Okay. How about this graph? Background. Background, yes. Colors don't match. Colors don't match. We got pre-test, post-test. Pre is blue. I mean, it's not exactly the same blue, but I guess we can assume that's blue. But then the post-test is not the color of the dark, dark salmon or whatever that is. So it was a guy. What's that? So it was a guy. Uh, I don't remember. I've, I've tried to anonymize it as much as possible. <laughs> yeah, right. Good. So background not aligned. Anything else? How about alignment? Um, again, there's, there's lots of issues here, but, but for example, we talked about consistency. This is clearly one font. This is a different font, right? So regardless of if this is the best one or this is the, the, the best one, it should at least be consistent. Wait a second. He also said <laughs> the pre and post lesson plan is now. Okay, so it's a test before the lesson plan and it's a test. Presumably. Another issue, again, with just alignment, here we go, we have da 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 ha, <laughs> right? So if we're doing this, why don't we have it all fit on one line, right? I mean, it's not, not an issue of a word that's, 
you know, supercalifragilisticexpialidocious that can't fit on that line. It just simply was too quick or whatever, and they didn't, they didn't give enough detail to, to making sure it's all aligned properly. Okay, how about this one? Uh, Classic graph from Excel. I love the regression line. What regression line? <laughs> okay, very good. <laughs> No, no, no. That's what they. That's what they have. Yeah, yeah. So she needs a different graph for representation of this. Okay. Again, uh, what's our space? So regardless of the the if this is the right font or not, look how small this font is. Can you read that in the back, Dorothy? Yep. But I have 2015. Okay. Well, Dorothy's <laughs> Dorothy's a hawk. She's tracking mice. So right. What's well, okay? Now she can smell a bad. Uh, so you can smell a bad graph. That's good. So this. Why, look at this, we have all this, I don't know what this is, inches of space here, of real estate here, right? Let's knock this up a bunch. A quick rule of thumb when you're doing your graphing or posters or whatever is on your, let's say your laptop or your screen, you push away from the screen an arm length, so touch your index finger to the screen, Gesundheit, and you sit back and you should be able to easily skim all this stuff. The text, the the uh, numbers, et cetera. And this is, this is ridiculously small. This, need, this is too small. Uh, so that's that. Uh, presumably this is how many students missed test question one, test question two, test question three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. When you join a line to something, that implies some amount of continuity. So that implies it's, it's over time or uh, you know, distance away or something like that. So this would not be appropriate to have this linked by a line uh, graph because that, that would imply that four has something to do with five. And unless we know that questions one, two, and that, one, that two led from question one and three led from question two, et cetera, these are presumably just independent questions. So a dot, plot, scatter plot is the right way to do it, or a bar graph, as you guys suggested, but not, not a line. Okay? All right, how about this one? Again, font, font, different font style. So right, again, this was like our first example uh, a while ago. Look, it's, uh, here's category A, category B, category C, category D. What, what does the color matter? The only time I would do this is if maybe on a subsequent graph or a map I wanted to color code it. Then it would make sense. Then, then the, the rats would show up orange on the map. But just as a standalone graph would not, it doesn't make, it, it's, it's too additionally, it's another source of distraction. It's also very large. There's, there's a lack of attention to detail. Mm -hmm. It's a very simple thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ooh, our old friend, the picture behind, picture behind the graph. Oh, you guys are total gullible. You guys are gullible for a good picture. Okay, wait, okay, so, so who likes the picture? Who likes this graph with the picture behind it? Oh, the ladies, one, two, just two? Hayden, is that your hand up or not up? Two. They can't. There's no liking a little bit. You like it or you don't like. Ready, go. Who likes it? Two. Who dislikes it? Whoa! Look at that. 
So even if you ladies in the back like it, you should take note that most people find it distracting. OK, good. So what, uh, what else can we say about this uh, graph here? Uh, I'm sorry, you mean, you mean the, the yeah, OK, so elements is, or maybe of is easy to read when it's dark, but elements is a little hard to read when it's light behind it kind of thing, you mean? OK. Okay, good. Okay, good. The asterisk is a little confusing here. I don't understand the breakdown of percentages. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand That's what other is. It definitely doesn't add up to 100. I think the, um, I, I'm, I'm not a fan of the picture behind the graph, but I think it would have worked better if they put maybe like a, um, like a faded white background behind yes. the graph area. Yes. So you still have the picture, but it, it's highlighted. Uh, right. right. Again, real estate, right? Look at this. So even, even if all the other stuff being equal, check it out. The, we have all this where there's no graph, all this where there's no graph, and we have the 39 being jammed in between this little, between the uh, uh, grid line, right? So use the space you have. In your poster, use the space. On your page, use the space. John? Also, I don't think the grid lines are necessary. Probably not. Probably not. Right. But here, here's a great example of the problem with the picture, right? Let's take a look at, look at this. Look at this grid line, nice and clear. It's dark in the background. I have this, this gray. Okay, I can tell that that is supposed to be whatever the hell, 40%. But then check it out. Oh, I can see it. What? Camouflage, right? It just disappears right there. You can't even see the 21. That's right. That's right. So, so it's uh, not uh, helpful. Okay. Mm. Uh, I'll just say, generally, stay away from pie charts. <laughs> generally, pie charts are not your friend. I'm not saying you could never, ever use them, but generally, because they oftentimes completely lead people astray. So the reason why professional statisticians don't like to use them uh, has to do with the fact that what we're supposed to be represent, what the pie chart represents is, the, is this is the circumference, is, is, the, is the perimeter length. That's not how people psychologically interpret them. They look at the area of the pie wedge, and they, and they intuitively think that that's what you're showing. And so it, it, um, in, if things are totally evenly divided, it's not a big deal. But when it's something that has uh, radical differences in, in pie wedge slices, it really leads people, so if, if we, so if you do a study and you show people a, a graph like this, but you don't put the, the percentages in, they, they'll almost always get it wrong. They'll overestimate the big, overestimate the importance of the big wedges and underestimate the importance of the little ones. So generally, um, of course you can use it, and, and I have used pie charts in the past, but generally you want to not, I would not default to using those and only be really, really sure. John? What about like the donut graphs or only shows the Donut graphs are definitely better, and that, that's why they were created, because they're, they're an improvement over uh, the pie charts. But again, uh, those not as good as just a regular XY graph. Because with an XY graph, it's, re it's relatively easy for someone to look across an eyeball and estimate the difference. Even with, a, with, a don't, with the, uh, any kind of circular graph, it's much harder for people to estimate. Is that twice as much as that one? You know, if it's on the other side of the graph kind of thing, so. One last question, or I guess kind of thing about this with the pictures in the background. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think in general for like a scientific paper it's professional, but when you're trying to communicate uh, information to a wide audience, like in like a sustainability report or like a uh, status report or something like that, where, and I think it's a matter of taste or who's writing it, but it's sure. really important to engage wide audience with pictures and stuff like that. And what's the balance? I mean, I guess that's case by case kind of thing. Yeah, like, it, it is. It's all this stuff. A lot of your, a lot of your writing is going to be, you know, sort of. It, it's it's um, there isn't a perfect answer for most of these questions. Uh, so yes, there could be times when having an image behind would be a useful approach. I would urge you to, if you really think that, make your graph with a solid background and then make your graph with your image. 
And really the only time that would be, I think, uh, preferable is if, I don't know, is if we had two minutes and we had two slides to show, you know, we're sort of time constrained or space constrained. Um, I think it's still generally speaking better to have your picture and have your data somewhere else as, a, as an initial rule of thumb. That's my suggestion. Okay, cool. Uh, ooh, maps, look at that. Yep, Google Maps. Fail! I can't tell where it is. Uh, mind, okay. Ventura and Santa Barbara. I haven't seen that for years. <laughs> <laughs> if I wasn't from around here, I would have to see Right, 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 right. Yeah, so just another Google Map. Don't do Google Maps. Okay, how about this one? Nice scale bar. Scale bar? The title. Wait, you like that scale bar? I don't like that scale bar. So it's well, okay, good there's a scale bar, check, good. But well, how should we fix it? Well, no, I don't think you want to keep meters, but meters can separate less or separate more. So you can bounce a little bit better. But what the hell is twenty two point five? Right? So this is gonna happen and this is an automatic this is an automatic scale scaling routine that uh, ArcGIS does, right? And that's fine, it does it, but then once you do it and you realize this is the size I want, then you go in and you tweak it, right? So end on 20 kilometers, end on 25 kilometers, end on something consistent and even, not some, some random uh, s partial slices of numbers, yeah? Uh, their first value of their elevation has way too many decimal points, and I, I'm guessing... Right, you're talking, you're talking about uh, this guy. Yeah. Right. Yes, exactly, right. So just like this was the auto-generated, this is the auto-generated from the ranges. So, right, we want to go in, edit that, and make sure that the values are, uh, you know, 5 to 10 or whatever it is. They should have relabeled the job 179975. That's right. That's right. Th this needs to get labeled. Value needs to get relabeled, too. Uh-huh. I think it would be helpful also to take the north arrow, just shift it over into the, the ocean and just change it to a white collar instead of putting that back. Yes, that, that's a horrible background. Yeah. That's ugly yeah. as heck. Right. Good. Uh, now, there's also times when, and you guys have to make this call, sometimes uh, because of the particular geography of the map, or your landscape, or whatever the case may be, um, this this uh, you know horizontal or portrait maybe not doesn't quite fit ideally, right? So maybe we want to, and I'm not saying you have to, but in this case perhaps you know twist this so this is a bit more uh, horizontal, so that north wouldn't necessarily be up but to the side. As a general rule, we like up to be north, but in some cases it would make you give you the ability to zoom in more or give more detail if we were able to twist it a bit. So, not saying you should do that, but you should maybe try that and compare the two and see how they look. No, no, not, not projection. The orientation. So instead of, instead of north being the straight to the top of the page, maybe north would be to 45 degrees or something. Uh, that's, that, that's what prompted me to say that. Yeah, so there's a lot of... So here is the nut of what we want to know about, right? All this, we don't care, 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 we don't care. Now, this is important because just like the graphs we talked about, this, this is telling the audience what you, the author, thinks is important. So by spending, it looks like more than half of the graph space showing me the uh, topography of Western Ventura County, you're telling me that, that that has something to do. I want you to understand that. I want you to, to contextualize this to properly understand the data. If this doesn't have anything to do with your story or, or your, your results, then we should crop it much more heavily, right? And indeed, maybe even, maybe even not you know, have this carved out and, and not have anything represented over there, possibly, right? So, so your allocation of, of pixels is a signal of what you think is important on tables, on graphs, on maps.
Cool. Other comments? Good start. Okay, yeah, good. Yeah, good start. Uh, the colors, I think, are good. Yeah. The colors seem to be pretty effective in terms of drawing the distinctions between these, these categories. It's pretty easy to see where we're in the 5 meter or uh, 0 to 5 meter, for example, range. So that, that, I like the color scheme. Okay. So again, another one of consistency of... <laughs> so here's another one. You guys love the pictures. Here's another picture. <clears throat> so again, numbers, super small. Super small, right? Uh, the error bars are some kind of giant dot attack from aliens and high or something. I don't really understand why that's happening. And then again, we have the, we have the figure behind, the uh, uh, landscape behind it. Um, and generally... I know you guys like to be, be creative, and I'm not saying don't be creative. Go ahead and try it. But these kind of fonts, these like do 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 kind of, hey, ye old timey fonts, generally don't work. So maybe if you were talking about results from the Los Angeles Times and you want to use the font of the Los Angeles Times, sure, that could, that could be effective. But generally, stick to the basic consistent fonts. Don't try to get quirky with Comic Sans or something like that. Okay, how about this one? <laughs> Wait, what? Good, bad? Bad. Why bad? Too much happening. Interesting. So, wow. So, too much happening. There's just too much overlap on, like, for instance, the landscape. You can't really understand. But uh, I guess you can. I don't know. Maybe if you reduce the. Uh, yeah, that could help with the overlap. Uh huh. Yeah, if I'm theoretically colorblind, uh, those you know, <laughs> dots and things aren't going to help me at all. Yeah, you mean you're talking about these X's, for yeah. example, and so these they're, diamonds. They're so close right. Together, I'm uh huh. Track of what are, what's right, on. right. Okay, good. Uh, okay, so you guys don't like the colors. You guys don't like the, the thickness of the lines or the, or the uh, symbols. What else? Yeah, so this is another one. You, a lot of people, for some reason, I talked about putting pictures behind their things. Also, a lot of folks like to do 45 degree text alignments. Sometimes it's a space issue. I understand. I totally understand. Really long. That's the only time I've ever done that. I totally understand. But usually it lines up, it lines up to the edge. But generally, it's still not as good as just making it go straight up and down or straight horizontal. Yeah, yeah, good question. Don't know, maybe they died or something before they could get them? I don't, I don't know. Uh, probably, I suspect, they hadn't collected the data yet, and this was their draft graph, so they wanted it set up, but yeah, John. A different graph for each one of these things would also be good, I think, because it's just a huge amount of overlap. So maybe like having a summary graph, but also having a different table for each one of like landscape, having its own. Okay, right, good. So in some cases, maybe a table is the right way to communicate information. In some cases, maybe a graph is the right way. And, and it's going to depend uh, sort of on the, your question, but in some cases like this, it's going to depend, you know, is the data really falling on top of each other? Now, maybe that's part of the, so if the data is all on top of each other, maybe that's an important thing for, for this. Maybe all these sites are behaving similarly, for example. So it's not necessarily a bad thing that things are quote unquote on top of each other as long as we can identify them when they are not on top of each other, et cetera. Would it be considered honest or transparent if you had like this graph, but you also had like, a, like a, almost a trend line? I don't know what you would call it, that average together all those things. Sure, sure, it. sure. That, 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 I would say, I mean, if that was part of the study, if you want to see how all these sites are uh, performing, um, Yeah. So the other, so okay. The other thing to say about this is what do we what did I just say about a line graph? What does it imply? Connectivity. Connectivity. So if Senate is just upstream from Topango, uh, which is just upstream from Las Virginas, which is just upstream from Escondido, from Upper Solstice, you know, geographically aligned or something, then maybe it's okay. But 
Uh, I'll just tell you that's not the case here. <laughs> so, so the line is implying connectivity. In other words, by putting a line here, we're implying that this thing, whatever this is, I guess Las Virginis Creek, is next to or contiguous with uh, Escondido Canyon. And I don't believe that is the case with this particular data set. So the proper thing to do would be to have it as a scatter plot or have it as a, as a symbol there as opposed to a connected line. Or maybe have uh, Topango Canyon Creek bar graph and then have each bar be the different, like the landscape type, hydrology. Right. Right. And so to answer John's, I think it was John's comment, I think the overall is what this is. Oh, okay. So these are all the components that go into making, uh, so the green, I don't know what that is, beige, yellowish, brown, light brown, all are components of the overall dark chocolate uh, score. So, so another way to do that would be, like you guys are saying, make these thinner, or, well, or make, well, yeah, anyway, yeah, you guys get it. Okay. Ran that one to death. Oh, look at that. What about this? So what about this map? Let's look at this map. What do you guys think about the map? Legend is a bit uh, trippy. It's a, it's, it's, it is a big map. Right. It's very square. Right, and we have something that looks dark blue, light blue, and dark blue, but I don't really see, I mean, maybe it's one of these, it's just it, 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 confusing. When it comes to symbology, isn't it, um, there's, a, there's kind of a rule of thumb, I completely forgot what the name for it is, or who coined it, um, but like, in terms of like colors, or shapes, or patterns, isn't it, like, you can have up to like six or seven different kinds of images Right, garbled gook, yeah, yeah, hard to track, yeah, right, yes, yeah, so, so in this case, we've zoomed in, I mean, I don't know, I don't know what the heck this person is trying to show, but we've zoomed in, and presumably they're trying to show this track, because that's what they've, that's what they've highlighted, right, but yet they have all these, these color schemes that, I mean, you have to stare at this thing really close, but it looks like there's a green here, there's some kind of purpley thing going on, there's a blue, there aren't, there, is, there doesn't appear to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. There doesn't appear to be 13 colors in and around this area. So, um, so yeah, so there's that. What else? So what else? Co the colors that aren't there, other than the track, aren't represented in the legend. That's right. So, so they've, they've, they've made them pa partially transparent, so the color scheme is harder to interpret. Um, uh, what else? We got a legend. So, I mean, it might not be great, but there's at least there's a legend. There is a scale bar. There is a north arrow. There's a title. Right. 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 So, again, the, the right. So, all this super. All right, cool. How about that one? What's that? I feel like they should use the same units to the jumping from 16 centimeters to one meter. Oh, okay. That might have been their study design or something, but okay, it seems. But then it's hard to compare them on the same graph. Wait, I think that's just. No, that's like the. Two that's like the depth of. Uh, the sampling. The sampling, right? So yeah, I think so. Okay, so maybe that's. They didn't explain that, though. Yeah, it should be like 15 centimeter depth, one meter depth. Another one that I tend to like to do, and this is a style choice, so it's your guys' call. There's, there's nothing wrong with this, but I tend to like to go and put a text box, say here, like so let's say a white, a white text box, and say 15 centimeter. And then one here that says one meter, right? And then eliminate this. And then that gives me another, you know, several inches more on the real estate to, to plot that stuff. 
Okay, any other comments? People are getting burnt out of doing graphs, yeah. The black bar you can't see in the standard deviation. Okay, yeah, so this is so chocolatey brown that the black is hard to see. Okay, good, so maybe a, a, pick a slightly different color. Good. Other comments? I think we're about done. Uh, do not, I'll just tell you the answer, do not do three-dimensional graphs. Okay. No one is ever allowed to do 3D graphs. They are baloney, primarily because they make it hard for people to, again, like we said, estimate. So check this out. So here we go. So do I estimate from the blue bar top or from the dark bar top? And then the ground is, the, the thing is moving and, oh man, don't ever do it. Just don't do it. Just non-three-dimensional, non-fake non three-dimensionality and you're good to go. Oh, I see you guys love it. I love it. Okay, getting near the end here. So clearly uh, this caused someone to have a seizure. Um, so, um, so yeah. Uh, you know, this is clearly a default on the whatever program they're using to say, hey, you know, put the value at the top of each bar and probably not that helpful when these guys are all basically the same, right? So this is, this is screaming out for grid lines so that folks can better estimate that this is in the, you know, between 95 and 100 or something. Yeah, Hayden. Were these the final? Wait, wait. Or just like no, no, this is first, this first, first cut. So, okay. So, all right, good. So, uh, again, we don't need to, and also we don't need to label necessarily every, when it's something like this, one, two, three, four, five, we don't need to label every single one, right? We could do one, three, five, right? And we would understand that the one in between would be the next number. And that would, again, give us more real estate to make that font a little bit bigger, a little bit easier to read. Right, right. Yeah, there's, yeah correct. There's no titles here, right? Good. Uh, on the X or the Y. Or title in general. How do you feel about starting at like 40 on that graph per se? Does that all go up to 40? Uh, possibly. Possibly. So uh, I guess it, it's going to, so the question is, uh, should we start at zero here or should we start at 40 since the lowest value is say 60? Uh, possibly. But I, I, I think this might be different tests, uh, like question 20, question 21, I think. So if that was the case, probably not. But not knowing that, just looking at this grossly, sure, you know, yeah. you have like a point for each one of those, and then like you can see that the line won't like do it, create like overlapping as much? Can you sure, yeah. So possibly, possibly. I'm just saying if, if these are truly independent, if 24 is an independent measure from 25, yeah. then um, that's, that might not want to be a line graph. Again, this would be the case where if this really was questions, check out, there's something going on here, right? At least, I mean, we don't know what the hell the numbers are, but just look for pattern. Da, 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 kind of all the same. Da, 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 kind of all the same. Something's weird here. So the question, or if they are questions, 11 through 16, a little bit weird. This is the great time to put labels underneath here. These are questions about what color the sky is. These are questions about how big the earth is, right? You know, kind of do some, do some binning of the questions or the, or the categories to aid interpretation. Robert. Would you say, uh, remember the, the graph you showed us of the United States, New Zealand, all, all those? Right. Couldn't you should do something like that as well and just say, or in lesson two, and that would give you a lot more real estate? You could. Uh, you could. You could. So, so to, to, but to keep on that one point first before I forget, this distracted. So the question, Ryan's question or comment was, do we have to start at zero? Can we start at 40? The answer is, uh, well, it's going to depend. So the old statistics program I used to use, I guess I still use it, um, it was frustrating in that it never allowed you to truncate the range. If you truncated the range, it would throw out the, if there were data points that were beyond the range, it would throw those out from the analysis. And that's what the statisticians would say, that, that you're only, that um, we're only, that the range fully covers all the data presented. <clears throat> because, of, uh, because of various issues, the other problem with truncating it to 40 means 
in a sense, you're overemphasizing the differences between 94 and 65. Now, if you, if you properly label it and it says you're starting at 40, you're technically not lying. But again, how most people will interpret the graph, just like we talked about the, the pie graphs, they're going to think that goes from the low value to the high value, not sort of the intermediary to the high. One way to possibly do that, if you really think you need to do that, you can break the graph. You can start the 0, 20, or I say 0, and then do a break, and then start go to 40 here. So, so to create a visual break in the graph, so you're acknowledging that there's nothing going on here, but I want to get to this other part. But that's still, uh, I would say the default should always be to go from the full range to the top range. OK, you guys are probably getting burned out. How about that? No, no says Dorothy. Apparently, arthropod is really powerful. Everybody else is in some kind of patchouli haze. You can't quite read it. It's all foggy and such. No, uh, 3D, um, all that kind of stuff. So let's, uh, let's, stay, let's stay away from the uh, outlined text with, with uh, shadow and underline the title. That, right? Pick one of those. Pick one of those ways, italicize to emphasize something, underline to emphasize something, shadow, not, not all the above. Uh, I think this will be our last one. What about this map? I'm sorry. What is the blue splotchy supposed to be? Good question. I believe it's probably supposed to represent wetland, but it doesn't say that, does it? So 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 you like the graph? You like the map or don't like the map? And why don't you like it? Okay, so Evan doesn't understand what's going on. And then Jay, what did you say? It's cluttered. There's just a lot going on. It's kind of hard to maybe maybe they could have left out a few of the like the the railroads labeled multiple times. And if they had a legend in there, then we wouldn't need to put those words. Right, the railroads labeled multiple times, but also check it out. Here's railroad. R, A, I, here's, those are not children! It's all like jammed <laughs> together, right? And there's one Amy Road! So there's no consistency in the labeling either, which I think contributes to the confused nature of it and the hard to interpret nature of it. It's, it's almost cartoony, which would be fine if it was a cartoon and illustration or whatever, <laughs> but like the, the fusion between cartoon illustration and actual graphic almost like puts it into like the status of a right right so so i put this up because I, I like the effort i like the effort in this right we don't always have to have if we're not if we're not if this is more of a for a planner or perspective thing we don't always have to have straight down maps i mean usually we do but um you know there's, there's not isn't anything anything necessarily wrong with a perspective map but it needs to be done well and it needs to be done with the same attention to detail that we do with any other figure. Um, yeah, cool. Other comments? So no legend. No, and then, of course, with the perspective map, scale is kind of out the door because it, it changes depending on where we are on the map. So that's kind of a bit useless there. North, a north arrow wouldn't be useless, though, to give people orientation. Well, they have the word north written in there, but all you see is half of the O. And oh, I'm sorry. They have north written in there? Yeah, it says orth. <laughs> oh, orth. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, okay, good. So, this good. This seems like the best effort of someone who didn't have access to ArcMap. Yeah. <laughs> they just had access to, uh, to Microsoft yeah. Paint. Yeah. Paint. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay, great. It's a pretty good Microsoft Paint map, then, I guess I'd say. <laughs> Okay, no. <laughs> okay, just a couple other things just to wrap up before we, before we break here is that, um, so yeah, so then regardless of the quality of this, right, still we have this sloppiness here. So even if they didn't have access to whatever the tools to generate a, a totally killer map, this tells me that they didn't care, right? This stuff isn't aligned. This stuff is per year. This is not per year. This is just, meh. Um, uh, Benefits, clearly recreation, these things are meant to be part of benefits, but they're shown at the same level. They should have indented those 
So just things that don't take very long, but you know, take a breath, go get a drink of water, come back, and let's let's look at this and make sure that all the the orientation is professional.